Ooh, what is up guys and of course welcome to our week two in the battle union and this week we're going up against leo and of course the turham dragons and if you see my team analysis you know that was definitely built for something more defensively against me he brought the offensive against me and that felt really tough for the get-go but i do not see any spinner which means that toxic spike is going to be a very very rare uh, or very important and crucial thing for this matchup so we're dealing with Infernape, Zorark, Shaman, Yolteo, Mimikyu, and Necrozma. Uh, so my first feeling was that he's going to lead up with his Necrozma or Infernape. So I'm going to start with my Guard War. Basically try to fret anything that he could lead up with. And Yolteon is also one of those Pokemon that could be a definite a good lead here. So Guard War, since, as stated, is a Soul Fist that could take on any kind of damage outside of a Flare Blitz from, of course, um, his Infernape. So, that was pretty much my idea. I'm definitely feeling that it's very likely that he's going to lead up with the crossman you set up rocks. So, anyway, with all this said, let's go into the game. So, from the get-go, he's going to lead up with Garuru, and that's the Infernape. So, I'll start with Elisa, and I'm just going to go for Moonblast. I'm basically banking on this to, uh, or hope that I'm fretting him by being Scarfed, and he's not Scarfed himself. As that exactly what he felt. He was not going to risk that tie, or not tie, but risking that I was Scarfed. As he goes to hit the Necrozma, as Moonblast will do a decent chunk of damage, since I am modest after all, and I get the special attack drop. So I feel right, let's keep this going. Uh, I had a little voice in my head saying that, you know, this is a good opportunity to bring in Roselia, as I just keep Moonblasting. And he goes for Light Screen here, so I mean, oh right, it's a screen across my... Okay, that's good. That's not the end of the world, as he will be very unlikely to set up, of course, any kind of uh, Reflect after this. As it brings in the Shaman, and I'm gonna get a massive crit here. When I say massive, I mean fuck you light screen massive. As this is a gold opportunity for me of you no know, Sil silver is going to be a thing here. So Leia can easily switch in here and take an air slash afterwards. As uh, the seed player, sadly I should say, uh, get that special defense drop and it's two times lost this time around. So I cannot take an air slash now. So I really need to switch out. Which is unfortunate because that was probably my biggest chance of getting up those toxic spikes. As Alyssa is gonna come back in, and I can't go back and forth now with um, with my Roselia due to that he is a life for version. Now he does miss the air slash, is not the end of the world. As Seed Flare is not gonna do a massive amount of damage since I am a Soul Fested, or you know, it's, it hurts, but it's not a 2 hit KO as for Jean. As um, the reason I didn't switch in Roselia a second time is because due to him being an offensive life for. I cannot take an air slash even after more HP lost there. It's simply not possible. As he's gonna bring Garuru here and Mega Blastoise or Blastoise is definitely like decent switch in here. I was feeling it's very likely could go a Thunder Punch, but it's a risk I was willing to take. As the roll here does leave me in a very good amount of damage where I can definitely take one after Mega Evolving. But yeah, that's the part. It is, he's actually adamant, so the roll is definitely not in my favor as I thought it was. So I definitely have a um, 20% chance of actually being KO'd, so I get KO'd. That, that's that's awesome, because that water pulse would not have helped me whatsoever. <laughs> but yeah, so anyway, I'm going to bring in Kaysher, basically force him out as... Um, I'm actually going for Earthquake. I was feeling that that was my best play throughout here, as he's going to bring in Jolteon with Air Balloon. And I was basically face palming. That is an excellent set. I really, really was back on the lifer version here. So that coming through, yeah, kind of nice, kind of, kind of tough for me. As Thunderbolt is his play nine times out of ten. I was feeling this is some fun. Leia is gonna be switched in as he goes for bad and pass. And um, now Chaos is gonna hate on me a little bit because I actually decided to stay with Roselia here, thinking that he would go for another Thunder Punch since I still have Jelly Scent. He goes directly for the Flare Blitz, gonna annihilate my Roselia. And no Toxic Spikes for me, clearly, and I was feeling I was such a bad position. Uh, I basically went from having a good position to free-falling, and that is pretty much the theme here. Because I'm going to bring in Kaysher, I know Mag Punch is going to land on me. I'm not going to die by Mag Punch, but I really need to have this exchange to do well. I can't risk any prior damage on Jellicent, since Jellicent has a Kessie Berry, so that is the one Pokemon that definitely can take on... Uh, um, what do you call him? That definitely can take on his Mimikyu. So he's gonna switch in Jolteon here. I'm gonna try to sack my Excadrill because I kinda need it fresh in, or I need my Bustle fresh in against it since it isn't an Assault Vest version. But it keeps going, goes with Thunderbolts. I'm feeling right. This time I'm gonna go for Shadow Ball. Fine. Um, that's my best play, really. As I'm gonna go to Goreheart. 
He keeps going for Thunderbolt, sadly, and um, he does a bit too much. He doesn't do like an absurd amount of damage, but it's it's too much on the, if you're asking me. Since of course Leash Life is not a KO here by any sense of the imagination, and since his air balloon, I can't utilize, of course, my uh, earthquake on my uh, bus wall. So while it's a 50% hit, and I get a, a lot of HP back, and together with of course the leftovers, I clearly am able to take another Thunderbolt. But the damage is already done, and it's so much so that uh, basically anything that comes in now is clearly Sorark or Mimikyu. Whoever comes in can wrap up the game. What I'm trying to say is that this is a super fast game with me messing up. <laughs> I really, really, really couldn't stand up against this offense, and I really, really did some questionable plays here, but uh, quite honestly, if I'm gonna be completely honest, as the Bla Mega Blast was falling, from there on out, I, I basically gave up. I never necessarily recovered from that position. Uh, I definitely feel like the early game was really nice for me. I definitely missed the opportunity of set up Toxic Spark early, which clearly would have helped me quite a lot. I actually lose here 2-0, which doesn't sound like a lot, but I never necessarily felt that I had control over this game whatsoever. And I really believe I kind of free fall throughout this battle because I just I couldn't take him on. And it was so frustrating knowing that he just could keep coming at me. So, GG Leo, if anything, um, I definitely feel like your prep was beautifully constructed versus me here. So, what the hell just happened? Yeah, one could definitely ask oneself that. Uh, I mean, it's a 2-0 loss. I mean, 1-0 necessarily, since of course the cross was basically dead too. It was basically only his Mimikyu left. So, uh, if you think about it like that, it feels like that was not a huge loss. But I never necessarily had control of this game. And I really want to enforce that. Um, I never had any f any way of dealing with this kind of offensive presence. He had five offensive Pokemon and a Crossma. Uh, it might not sound too eagerly here, but I was definitely feeling that my team offensively kind of shaked him so well that I was definitely not pre prepping myself for a he will play offensive because, like I said, I was pretty sure that that is a game I win. But I went super, super complex. I was definitely building versus defensive Pokemon to be able to stay stay against for a long time as this team. And he didn't have that idea in mind. And it really worked in his favor. Um, sure, that a special defense drop on Roselia and not getting Toxic Spikes up it is unfortunate. But that's the, that's the game we play, right? I'm Plus Seed Flare is, like, I do believe, like a 50% chance of that happening. So it's okay. I should definitely have fruit in Roselia after first Moonblast on the Crossma. Not fearing a cross map to the minus one. That was, I do believe that's a big misplay. Since I stated Leo did not have a chance of actually getting rid of them. Same thing with, of course, um, Mega Blast Toys there. If anything, I do believe like, Jellicent would have been much better off worth sacking. But I had a pretty decent chance of surviving that Thunderbolt. Um, there was, I do believe, roughly, uh, it was like uh, 19 to, since it was Adam and Life Orb. It was 19% to 26, so he would KO me, so it would still have been dead, but Infermaid would have been gone, which meant Rosiella would have been extremely dangerous from that point on, since Sora can't KO it, at least from that range. So it is an unfortunate role, but I'm not going to necessarily blame it on anything, because he does predict the Thunderbolt or Thunder Punch as I switch out, so he does that excellently, and um, I can only congratulate Leia for an excellent build versus me, and it really, really, really paid off. Um, I do some questionable play. I mean, Rosalia, losing Rosalia versus an Infernape is kind of dumb. I was definitely feeling that since I had Jelly Sand that he would go for Thunder Punch again. Uh, or again, said it in Swedish, that was weird. Uh, but he just stayed firm, he stayed just offensive, and he did it the predictions he needed to be made. So if anything, I'd say he predicted perfectly throughout this match. And I... He got a grip on me. So once Blastoise fell, I just... I couldn't recover. I couldn't mentally recover. Uh, I really felt that I was definitely out of my element, and uh, I don't know. Um, I definitely felt that Buswall and um, Jellicent and Excredible being so specifically built uh, really threw me off throughout this game because I didn't necessarily know what they could do when I didn't have a defensive mount to pivot around. And that's my fault. It's a big mistake, and I pay for it, and I pay for it dearly because Leo plays really smart. He knew. Offensive might actually be the better way of me picking I will probably overcomplicate things, which I did. That's great. <laughs> but Leo deserves this win, and like I said, it's a 2 0 loss. It's not the biggest, but I never necessarily had control over this game. So it's a very controlled 2 0 loss in Leo's favor. So 
Yo, buddy, Durham Dragons. Don't mess it up, so I'll meet you in the final because I I I will not take you lightly next time. I'm, I will show you what I made out of you, son of a bitch. <laughs> no, honestly, a oh, great game. And if everybody's been watching, make sure to check out Leo's side of the battle. Since I did this live, I really want to see all the salt and all the early game hacks against him. Who knew he would recover? Who knew I would just mess up so badly here? I'm I'm yeah I'm I'm kind of impressed and frustrated at the same time because I really thought I had something going. But I did not. <laughs> anyway, guys, thank you, of course, for watching. And I'll see you next week versus Quill and the Juventus. So until then, guys, take care. Bye.